Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Yes, thank you for joining us for Ask Rob and Rob, where we've got another couple of cracking questions from our listeners that we're going to be doing our very best to answer for you. We're going to be talking about buying off plan. We're going to be talking about a very important change to lettings law. But before we get to those, Rob, if someone's got a burning question of their own, how do they send that our way? Well, as we've never mentioned this before, we better tell you. Um, The number you want to call is 013 808 0035. Or you can go to thepropertyhub.net forward slash ask and get your questions into us that way. Super simple. Obviously so, because every single week we have plenty of questions to go through. This week's no different. First up, we've got Steve. Hey, Rob and Rob, this is Steve. Uh, Thank you for making the podcast as I get more into property investment. A quick question for you. I've been looking at buying uh, off plan in Manchester. The fact it is off plan is making me a bit nervous. Should I be? Thanks very much. I look forward to you answering my question and keep up the good work. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Great question. Now, I can't comment on the specific deal that you've mentioned because you haven't given us any information on it. But that's okay we can give you some good general advice that will point you in the right direction. And let's focus on the off-plan element. So, off-plan, should you do it? Well, depends. There's plenty of upside if you get it right. You have the potential to get a better deal. It's not a guarantee, so do your research and make sure it is a better deal. But you can push a little bit harder on the negotiation with an off-plan deal. So make sure you do that as a starter. So the opportunity to get a better deal. You're, of course, locking in a price now that may go up in the future if you're buying in a growth area and of course manchester is one of those so there's potential for that too remember it can go against you so buying areas that are trending upwards not downwards so london wouldn't be a great place for off plan right now and remember you only put a deposit down you're not putting the whole property value down so you don't have to utilize all your cash in some circumstances okay so upside potential Great. There's lots going on to make you consider off plan. But what do you need to look out for? What are the pitfalls? Because things have gone wrong in the past and they will go wrong in the future. But with a few quick tips, you'll be fine. So the biggie is that deposit I mentioned, you want to make sure it's protected. Now make sure it's really protected. There are people who say it's protected and they'll put some wonderful plans down, but they're not. You just want basic protection and you can achieve that in two ways. If it's not one of these two ways, you probably want to ignore it. One, the developer doesn't use your deposit. It's just held in a solicitor's account, often in escrow. It's just held there. It's never used. It's never touched. It can't be released without your permission. Could it be safer? It's just like putting money in a solicitor's bank account. Well, that's exactly what it is doing. And the solicitor will keep that ring fenced and that'll be fine. Or it's protected by insurance. So, for example... Home builders like NHBC or CRL, they're the people who give you that 10-year warranty on a new build. Little known fact, they can also protect you against your deposit on off-plan. NHBC, for example, protects you up to 10%. CRL can protect you up to 25%. It's not a given, so make sure, get your solicitor to check. But if that protection's in place and it's insurance-backed, which it is in those two examples, again, you've got good solid protection. Another thing people worry about is off-plan going on and on and on and being delayed. Well, that's really easy. You just want a long stop date put into your contract. What does that mean? Well, it means that if they don't deliver the build by a certain date that you've agreed on, then you can pull out. So you're not committed to a deal if it runs on and on and on. However, if the property market is on the rise, you kind of don't mind sometimes if the build is delayed. And third and finally, buying really off plan you don't know what you're getting yet so you want to buy from a developer you trust so look at the track record make sure you can see they've demonstrated on past developments as well if all they've ever sold is stuff off plan then it doesn't mean it's a bad thing but it means more research is needed so if you research the developer you protect your deposit and you put a long stop date in do those three things then try and work on the upsides and you should be fine well, how's that for a comprehensive answer? There you go, Steve. It's your lucky day. I'm sure that answers your question. I'm sure that's helped out a lot of other people as well, because that's something that we get a lot of questions about. Let's keep it going and see if we can help someone else. And that somebody else is Tom. Let's have a listen to Tom's question. Hi, Rob and Rob. It's uh, Tom from Cambridge here. Uh, you've answered one of my questions before, so I'm really, I think I'm pushing my luck a little bit in asking for a second. But hopefully you'll see it's quite a good question. 
and um, be prepared to answer it anyway. So my question relates to the uh, energy performance certificates. I've heard some uh, rather limited detail on um, some uh, red, um, restrictions which are likely to be coming in where certain bands of the EPC are not going to be uh, available for private rent. Um, I just wonder if you could clarify on that uh, exactly what the regulations are going to be and uh, when they're coming coming into force, etc. Thank you very much. Uh, keep up the great work. The content you put out, everyone says, is absolutely awesome. It really has given me the confidence to start investing seriously. Thank you. Tom, it's your lucky day as well. Second question answered by us, but you deserve it because this is a really good question and something that's well worth mentioning. So there have been so many changes to lettings law recently, this could easily have just passed you by among the many, many other things that have made the headlines. What this is about is, as you'll probably know, when you are buying a property or when you're renting a property out, it needs to have an energy performance certificate, an EPC. And this is something where a surveyor comes in, they measure the energy efficiency of the property and they give it a rating. That rating goes from A, which is the best, all the way down to something like G or H, I think it is. And in the past, that's been all there is to it. The ratings are either good or bad. A bad rating might put off some buyers or renters, but that's all there is to it. The change is that from this April, you will not be able to rent out a property that has an EPC rating of F or lower. So if a tenancy is currently going, then it's fine. It can keep on going, but you will not be able to relet it until that energy performance rating comes up. So what should you do about this? Well, if you've got properties that you let out already, it's a good chance to dig out the EPC and see what the rating is. If it's higher than an F, no problem at all. If it is F or lower, then the EPC will normally have some recommendations on there about what it'll take to get the rating up. So that could be anything from installing a new heating system to insulation to double glazing, all that sort of thing. So if you do need to get that rating up, you'll need to implement some of those recommendations and then get a new EPC with a higher rating before you can legally let the property again. If you're in the market to buy a new property, then the EPC will always be made available to you. So again, just check the rating. If it's above an F, all good. If it's below, then, well, that gives you a little bit of bargaining power. You know that you or any other purchaser will need to spend a bit of money to get the property up to scratch for it to be let out. So use that as an opportunity to reduce the asking price by the amount it will take to do the work and a little bit more for your trouble as well. So important to know, important to keep an eye on. But if you do have a property that doesn't meet standards, don't worry, not a disaster. There's normally something you can do about it in a pretty cost effective way. Rob, I thought you put great energy into that answer. That's oh. awful. Oh, dear. Right. Luckily, we've done our two questions, so we can end it there. And you don't have to hear any more awful gags like that. We'll be back on Thursday with the Property Podcast. And, of course, back next week with Ask Rob and Rob. So, until then, take care of yourself. Have fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.